Uh, so now we're going to go into lightning demos. And uh, first up is Michael Schneider from Google talking about PageSpeed. Please help me welcome Michael. Thank you, Steve. So working on PageSpeed, I'm going to demo you some of the newest additions to the PageSpeed product family. And I'm actually also going to demo you some of the new and exciting work we're currently doing to further improve PageSpeed. So um, the PageSpeed Firefox add-on is around for quite some time. Um, this spring, we actually released a, a Chrome extension, which is basically the same as the Firefox add-on. Here I have um, my Chrome uh, in full screen mode. This is our HTML5 slide, so I can actually bring up um, the developer extensions here um, for Chrome. And PageSpeed is just a tab here in the web inspector. So what PageSpeed does, it's not just measuring the wall times for loading uh, web pages, but it knows uh, about performance patterns and anti-patterns and actually analyzes the web page you have open in Chrome and provides suggestions based on those patterns what you uh, can do to improve uh, your page load time. So I'm quickly going to run uh, page speed on my slides. Um, the first thing you see here is there's a score, a uh, higher score means less room for improvement, lower score means uh, more room for improvement, so I have some work to do, I see here. Um, we get the suggestions um, in uh, sorted by priority. Um, the first and most important for my slides here is minimify JavaScript. I can see there are four resources, actually, which I should minimify, and that would save me over um, 60 kilobytes of download size. So in order to actually bring those suggestions to more people and um, make sure that more people uh, know what they can do to make their site load faster, um, we built PageSpeed Online, which is the very same thing as the PageSpeed Chrome extension, but it doesn't require a plugin. You can just go to pagespeed.googleapps.com and you get this site, which is embedded here in my slides. And it's available in over 40 languages since this week, so you can get your, uh, the suggestions for your site in your language. What I can do is I can just enter uh, an address here, so let's have a look at this very conference. <laughs> so PageSpeed loads now uh, the Velocity Conference website, and it brings you other scores. So anyone, there's, there's room for improvement, but... <laughs> So looking at the, again, at the suggestions here, also uh, sorted by priority, the first one is um, combine images into CSS sprites, and it actually ha uh, shows you some introduction, what it's all about, and which resources are, um, uh, you should look at to do that. Um, as more and more people actually uh, browse the web using a mobile device, uh, we thought we should uh, basically generate uh, suggestions for you that take into account the different characteristics of mobile devices. So with PageSpeed Online, you can uh, also get a mobile report, and what it does not only load your website using a mobile user agent, but what it also does, it has uh, additional rules, and it weights the suggestions based on those characteristics. So uh, mobile devices usually have uh, lower bandwidth, high round trip times, and uh, less powerful CPUs. So in this example here, you can see deferred parsing of JavaScript um, is something we found that is uh, five to 10x lower on mobile devices. If we parse that JavaScript up front, this site has 200 and 71 kilobytes of JavaScript, which adds approximately a quarter second to the page load time. If you're interested in all those suggestions for to integrate in your build or uh, build tools or in, in your product, we also provide PageSpeed API in addition to the PageSpeed SDK that's uh, around for quite some time. And here is an editor in my slides, uh, which lets me play with that API. And it's very simple. You basically send a request out uh, to the Google API's host, and I just add Velocity Conference once more. And I get back a JSONP response, and once it's there, I will just display the result uh, using the Google Charts API. So I click the button, it's run, it is run right in the slides here. 
And it does not only return the score, there's everything that you saw in PageSpeed Online, all that information was in that response data. If you're interested in PageSpeed API, there's actually a talk this uh, afternoon by my uh, colleague Andrew Oates at 3.30 at the Google booth. So now I promise to talk a little bit about what we are actually doing right now. So this is uh, also a dev channel, Chrome, and with the newest version of PageSpeed, a beta build that's actually available on our homepage as of yesterday. And we are looking at the more dynamic aspects of uh, loading a web page. Um, there's uh, usually lots of JavaScript going on. You build um, stuff, uh, you add uh, things to the DOM, and some things can go wrong if you do a lot of JavaScript. For example, you can trigger unnecessary reflows and that kind of things. Or your script can uh, run for a long time. So what we did, we uh, <laughs> tapped a new data source um, in Chrome which actually, if we run uh, PageSpeed here, that new version, you can see there are the well-known suggestions, not too many in that case, but we also have these experimental suggestions with the blue dot. And what you can see here is that we have one that says, eliminate unnecessary reflows. And we saw during uh, running PageSpeed that there was actually in a loop at this position in a pen row, there was a property read a couple of times um, that triggered a reflow over and over again. So PageSpeed now points you um, to the position to get rid of that. Um, there's also rules to avoid long running scripts so that you know you should break up those in, uh, in, in, in smaller pieces and there will be more rules coming based on that data. So that's all. Uh, we have from PageSpeed for now. Um, come to the uh, Google booth if you want to learn more. And as I said, there's a better version available um, which you can download and uh, play with, around with it yourself. Thank you. It's amazing how much you can fit into seven minutes. I thought that was wonderful. A very uh, nice move um, analyzing the Velocity website, Michael, and the uh, teacher becomes the student, touche. <laughs> we will talk about that at work. <laughs> and uh, you know, what, what you know, better uh, thing can you have happen than John Resig you know, tout your tool during his talk? Uh, so up next is uh, Andreas or Andy Grabner talking about Dynatrace Ajax Edition. Please welcome Andy. Thank you. Here we go. Just start my slides. So um, I hope uh, by now every Bruins fan is in the room, maybe still with the sunglasses on. It's been a, there we go. Um, so I have only seven minutes and I wanna go through, through uh, uh, some slides but then a demo. So basically, uh, those of you who have not been here uh, last year, last year we announced the Dynatrace Ajax Edition 2.0 and we live analyzed uh, the FIFA World Cup website uh, using the new uh, performance report that we introduced uh, like with uh, Ajax Edition 2.0, which made it really easy to analyze things like uh, how many network round trips do you have, how can you save on downloading images, but also how can you optimize your JavaScript performance. Uh, earlier this year, we announced Dynatrace Ajax Edition 3, and we added uh, support for Firefox 3.6 and 4, which now allows you basically, you know, have one tool that allows you to analyze um, performance in i6, 7, and 8, and also Firefox 3, 6, and 4. So one tool where you can do deep dive diagnostics, not only on uh, network downloads, rendering, but also deep dive JavaScript DOM manipulations uh, and HX requests. And uh, because we did all that, and some people you already maybe know, uh, they played around with it. We heard from, uh, from John before how he likes our tool. Uh, Steve also gave us a great uh, blog post and, and, and some great um, comments. So. Um, it, it seems we, we did a good job in, in, in supporting the community to build better, better websites. So what I'm going to tell you today is, or basically I want to remind you for people that don't know Ajax already or that know Ajax but haven't upgraded to the latest version, we have a tool now where you can test your websites in the two major browsers, IE and Firefox. And you can pair the results side by side and really figure out how is your page working on IE 6, 7, 8, on also 9. We have uh, experimental support for IE 9, and how does it work in Firefox? I know Steve Chrome is also a major player, because I saw your eyes. 
Um, we are a tool that does not only look at page load time. We know page load time is important, but with, with uh, Web 2.0 applications, it's, it's very important to also optimize all the JavaScript that happens while the user is on your Web 2.0 page. So when you click on a link and you make an Ajax request, you also want to optimize these Web 2.0 actions. So we added a new report to the Ajax edition that actually tells you how many Web 2.0 actions you have and how you can optimize these actions. Uh, we heard a lot this week already about how we uh, integrate with other tools like ShowSlow, Selenium, um, web page test, and all the other tools. If you're interested in integrating Dynatrace in an automated environment, just go to our blog uh, and look up uh, how to integrate with those, those tools or go to our community portal. The last thing that I also want to mention, it's been in there for a while, but we do not only compare your site against the best practices that we came up with, but we also allow you to compare your site against real sites out there. So we have a new service called Speed of the Web, where we on a daily basis test the top Alexa pages and pages in the different industries. So if you are a sports site, you can compare yourself against the top pages in the sports industry and see how well you do. Before I go into the demo, some reminders because I've been asked. So some people came to me and say, hey, it's a great tool, but it's sometimes hard to get started. For that reason, we created 15 video tutorials. Uh, we posted them on YouTube, but if you go to our website, to hx.dynatrace.com and click on Getting Started, that's where you can access the, um, the video tutorials. And that's also the place where you can download the tool. The other thing is go to our blog. Uh, we, we post a lot on our blog about stuff that we find, so there should be a lot of educational content on there, how to optimize your pages. And also, I've just posted the blog post with the slides that I used today and also with the two sessions that I'm going to analyze later. So if you go to blog.dynatrace.com, you can start downloading these sessions. And once you sign up, when, once you download Dynatrace, uh, you create, you get a user account that allows you to interact with the community. All right, so let's launch the Rocket Turtle. And uh, what I did yesterday during the game, I uh, downloaded or I, I, I walked through um, uh, the uh, Fox Sports, and I, watch, I checked the Bruins page. So basically what, I'm, what I have here is once you use Dynatrace, I actually used it uh, with Firefox. So I recorded several steps uh, going through the NHL pages uh, on, on foxsports.com. And what you get with the performance report that comes up by default is like an over, overall summary how well your page is doing. And this is the feature that I want to remind everybody of. So you can either compare against the best practices or you can see how well your page is doing against the top sports sites based on, Le on Alexa. We do similar rankings than all the other tools are doing, like PageSpeed and WhiteSlow. So I don't want to necessarily go through all the individual tabs, but basically we show you how well you do with caching, how well you do on the network front, it seems here. This page actually has 113 HDB redirects, which is really interesting. Um, uh, we show you which uh, requests are slow on the server side. Um, for those people that don't know, we do not only give away free tools. We actually have tools where we actually make some money. So uh, if you want to optimize your performance on the server side, check us out, check our booth. Um, we, can, we help you there as well. Before I go to JavaScript, I really love the timeline view. The timeline view really shows you every activity that goes on on, on the page. It includes all the network round trips, all the downloads. It includes rendering. And it also includes JavaScript execution. And from here, just with a double click, you can drill into the details. But what's really cool, and I think this is one of the big advantages of the HX edition, we do full uh, JavaScript tracing and DOM tracing. Um, and if you go to the uh, JavaScript tab, then it basically shows you where are your problematic JavaScript handlers, what are your problematic jQuery calls, and it seems here there's an on post load method that takes 745 milliseconds. If you click on it, not only do we show the actual source code, but you also show you the main contributors, and it seems that they are using, uh, I'm, I'm on Firefox here, they're using an old uh, version, I think it's of YUI, where they make lookups on, on, uh, on the CSS class names, and these lookups take 170 milliseconds to look up one single element. Um, so right away, I can see where my performance bottlenecks are. And with one single click, I can drill down into a, the, the, the core of Dynatrace, the pure path, which actually shows me um, what actual code was executed in which sequence. So here I can really execute, uh, see you know, why did it take 700 milliseconds to execute uh, this um, JavaScript method, which other methods were called, and what actually happened there. I think this is what John said. Uh, we give you very detailed tracing information um, on JavaScript, on DOM, and also on rendering. Uh, I'm almost out of time. So just as a reminder, 
check out the video tutorials. We also link here um, on the start page. Uh, that's how you get started. Check out the community and visit our booth. Uh, we are here and uh, we have a code challenge uh, so you can win an iPad too and we also have these great t-shirts. So I think with that, thank you. Thanks, Andy. I wanted to ask Michael, uh, I know at the talk yesterday, um, Brian handed out PageSpeed t-shirts. Are there any more of those left? Yeah. Okay, so maybe go by the Google booth and check that out. And so, Paul Irish is in the house. I'm so excited to have him uh, here at Velocity. And um, he's gonna be talking about Chrome. I'm glad that Andy mentioned that, would love to get um, uh, Dynatrace Ajax edition on Chrome, but Chrome has its own dev tools and Paul is going to uh, give us a little tour through those. So give it up for Paul Irish. Cool. All right. Woo. So we're gonna go and I'm gonna show you a few uh, features inside the Chrome developer tools that uh, should uh, meet your fancy. So uh, firstly, um, the task manager. Um, oh, we'll have it in just a second. Uh, I'm on the Google Chrome developer relations team, by the way. Um, and in general, I speak to developers about how to make uh, websites that are fast, websites that are fun, websites that take advantage of a lot of new functionality. Uh, inside the developer tools, we got a lot of new stuff that's landed in the past 12 months. Um, so everything I'm gonna be showing you here today is, is new stuff. Um, but hopefully it'll be pretty cool to you. All right. Well, um, uh, <laughs> demo's, going. demo's going great. Live demoing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah? Rock and roll. Yeah, it's six more time up. All right, all right, all right. We're cut. Okay, first, I wanna show you the task manager. Normally it looks like this. I'm gonna bring it up right here live for you. Uh, all right, here we go. So task manager gives you a nice view of you know, your pages, your extensions, how much memory they're using in the CPU, the network throughput, even the frames per second now. But if you right click, there's a lot more stuff that's available. You can kind of see uh, the, the number, amount of stuff that's in the script cache, the CSS cache, the image cache, the JavaScript memory that's being used by the pages, uh, and even probably the most important metric that you're gonna be, that you're gonna wanna watch, the number of goats teleported by each page. Um, it's quite a lot of goats, it turns out. <clears throat> All right, so this is kind of like the, the 30,000 foot view, and we're gonna go down a little bit closer, down to the bare metal. Okay, so there's a lot of, uh, new JavaScript APIs for monitoring. Uh, first, of course, is the performance timing, right? And I, th I think we're all familiar with this here. Uh, this gives us a nice view, uh, an object full of all the network timings uh, that reflect the page loading performance. Um, this, we've had this in, in since Chrome 6, and now, of course, it's unprefixed, uh, but, well, that's all well and good. Now, in addition to performance timing, there's another one that we have available which is called performance memory. So inside performance memory, we have a nice snapshot view of the memory usage of the page. Uh, and so this represents just this page, uh, what the memory use is. I will point out that this is available if you execute Chrome with a command line flag, an, an enable memory info, and that will populate uh, that object with information. The next I wanna show is window on error. So window on air, uh, support was land landed for this in WebKit um, a few months back, which completes the cross-browser support. So now in a cross-browser functionality, in a cross-browser way, we can capture any errors that happen, any, any JavaScript errors, any uh, exceptions that occur, capture them at the global level, and be able to work with that. Uh, common uh, use cases, you'll just take that and you'll report that back to the server because you wanna know if your users are hitting landmines in your application code and then aggregate that at, at um, 
for a dashboard view. <coughs> the next, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with console.log. There's a lot more stuff on the console that you can access. So console.profile is an interesting one. Um, standard CPU profiling, we go in here, we do a little bit of action, we come back, and we have a look at what actually happened inside our application. That's cool, but we can actually kick this off uh, from the command line. So I'm gonna do console.profile, and I'm just gonna name it here. And we'll do a little bit of action, and back, and end off that profile. And so just like before, we created a new profile, we have that data. But the more interesting thing is that all this information is available to us in an object as well. And so we have console.profiles, which is an array of all the, of the profiling information, and this object represents everything that's up in this larger view, but we have it in an object, which is nice. So, so you can execute these methods inside your application code, get back this data, and then serialize it and shoot it up to your server so that you can kind of see how are users uh, um, uh, executing certain bytes of code. <clears throat> Another one that I wanna show is uh, Mark Timeline. So the timeline view is similar to what we just saw from Dynatrace where we can record, I'm gonna refresh the page right here, and the cool thing is that we can make little marks. So I'm just gonna, Console.mark timeline. Hi. Hello. <clears throat> so, what this does is it just applies a nice little mark here up on the timeline view. And in addition, down here, uh, we have nice, we have small little events. So, the cool thing is that while this timeline view gives you a great idea of what's being repainted, what's being reflowed, kind of the in browser performance aspects of this page loading, uh, we can inject these little marks with our uh, JavaScript so we can kind of group and get a better picture of how this relates back to our code. <clears throat> All right. So, there's a few things here. And, and I would recommend um, a lot of these make sense to kind of have in your application code and be gathering metrics, but also encourage you to th think about if these can work for you in more of a continuous integration setup, especially uh, you know, performance memory where you need to execute Chrome with a specific thing, but I think you can gather a lot of metrics like this in a, in a continuous integration and track, track your, your, your work over time. Next, uh, we have just added some extensibility APIs for audits, so you can create new tests, kind of like PageSpeed or YSlow, create new tests, um, and they can, they can take into account all the information coming in from the, net, the network. And this is good if you have clients or you have a team and you wanna maintain specific standards and make, make for instance, sure that there are no images above 80K. Uh, you can make that into a rule in a nice, very user-friendly way to, to enforce that. The next is the heat profiler, which just like a month ago got a huge upgrade. So the heat profiler is like your tool for digging into the memory consumption of your app. You can get snapshots of the memory usage of your app and be able to get diffs between those, group objects by constructor, ret uh, view the retain size, which is to say, if this object was disposed of and all the references, how much memory would I free up? So there's a lot in here, um, and if you're, if you're digging into memory leaks or finding the high highest memory consumers in your app, I'd really recommend you dig into it. We have uh, a whole new site a whole new set of docs and, and demos. We can kind of play around with this, so I'm really excited about that. And the last thing I want to point out <clears throat> is that um, we just launched this last month remote debugging, and this is really exciting. So I'm running Chromium right here, right? And what I actually did when I ran Chromium is, let me find it, <sighs> here we are. I ran Chromium from the command line and I passed it a flag, and I specified my remote debugging port. Now, what this means is that I'm gonna go over to a nightly build a web kit, and I'm going to open up localhost 922. Now, what happened is that my dev tools in Chromium is actually running a little mini web server, and I just connected to it over in nightly web kit. And so these two items refer to my two open tabs. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna open up these, and so even though I'm in a completely different browser, 
this functions just like your normal dev tools. And you have full control too, so I can do uh, memory, I, I can watch my timeline, I can execute profiling, all this. So I'm really excited about this. This is, uh, we have all the network timing information available to you, of course, the full timeline, all of our profiling, uh, both CPU and memory. <clears throat> and the really exciting thing is that all this code has gone in at the WebKit level, which means that all WebKit uh, projects and mobile browsers in particular that use WebKit have this functionality available to them now. Um, it's already shipping in the BlackBerry playbook, and personally, I'm really looking forward to seeing more mobile devices uh, soon having this functionality. So, I guess that's it for me. Um, we have a full site with a lot more documentation on all this stuff and more, and um, I, we'd love to, we also have a, a Google group where we'd love to get your questions and uh, answer things for you. So, thanks very much. Thanks, Paul. I was at Mobilism and uh, someone from uh, RIM showed me the BlackBerry playbook stuff. That's very cool. Uh, remote debugging, especially for mobile, is going to be huge. And our last lightning demo is uh, going to be Sergey, who's not only a big uh, performance meetup organizer out of uh, New York. How'd the BOF go last night, Sergey? Awesome. Yeah. I think we have four more groups. Yeah. Um, so he's really uh, organizing that really well and, and uh, evangelizing that. And he's also the creator of showslow.com and .org. And so he's going to uh, show us uh, the latest and greatest from Showslow. Please help me welcome Sergey. Uh, hi, everybody. To, uh, today and yesterday during these uh, lightning talks, you uh, saw a lot of great tools that do a lot of work to collect uh, performance data so you can analyze your performance and stuff like that. Showslow is actually pretty lazy and all it does is just collects uh, your performance data and shows it uh, visually so you can uh, make sense of, of the history of your performance history. So uh, we started two years ago with uh, just Wiselow and now we uh, collect data from page speed, Dynatrace, um, Firebug net expert extension with HAR expert, um, even DOM monster bookmarklet running right in your browser can send data to Showslow as well. And as of this Monday, it's probably an announcement, developed at Velocity, we um, uh, also collect data from web page test and uh, soon all web page test data will be sent to showslow.com after the presentation, hopefully. <laughs> so, um, details page for a particular URL is kind of your dashboard that shows you um, overall rankings for um, particular tools you're measuring. So, right at the top, you can see the business, business people can see are they doing good or not in a very visual format. And after, under it, you can see the, um, uh, all the your history graphically uh, presented in a, uh, in a chart as well. So uh, let me switch to a browser. Um, so in addition to all of those tools that I mentioned, like um, they're all awesome and they give you a lot of data, but there is no, nothing uh, outside of your company that can be created to show your business value, right? So in addition to those, uh, I think the most important is to send your business metrics to your tool to be able to connect that performance to uh, performance improvements to business improvements that they created. So uh, here you can see um, uh, exit bounce rate, for example, that uh, can be drawn right next to your data, right? And that comes from Google Analytics. And, or you, you can send your um, revenue per session, for example, from an order system, and that will allow you to correlate um, performance improvements to uh, business improvements and show to your boss that, hey, there is a good business case to invest into performance because that is actually the reason why Showslow was created, to help you create that business case. Um, during the last year, in addition to adding many, many tools to grab, uh, 
grab as much data as possible. We also did a redesign, and um, as you can see, you can now check any metric that you track and display it on the graph. So like if I clear the metrics and then pick one particular one, you can see that metric right on the screen, network permitting. Okay, maybe not. Yeah, here we go. And you can also zoom in, I'm sorry, zoom in and out to analyze particular area of the page, right? And uh, you can see the legend over here shows you, um, uh, shows you that as well. So um, in addition to just tracking metrics, what's important is to um, track what has changed on the site, right? Just knowing that metric has changed is not enough. So you can see the, uh, in ShowSlow, uh, you can track events and send them uh, to your instance using a web service, and the, if you notice those vertical lines, uh, you can hover over them and see uh, changes. Let me show it in a, with default metrics, which is probably more visual. So um, you can see changes that happen to your, uh, to your site, and you can send anything. If you can send configuration tool changes, um, code deployments, even content changes if you like, you can plug it into your content management system, uh, although there will be a lot of events, obviously. So to tell your business story, like uh, the b use cases that we heard from Shopzilla a couple years ago and F uh, Firefox uh, use case story, to tell you those business cases in your company to prove that performance matters and to uh, help business understand that maybe that is where you need to put your money in. You need to start doing that early. So uh, set up your show slow to gather some baseline data, um, configure tools to send data to your instance, and track them over time. Setup is pretty easy. Uh, uh, you can, your developers can start quickly. Um, but, uh, automation is a little bit more complicated thing. But uh, now with uh, PageSpeed Online API that Michael just showed to you, uh, it al it's already integrated with ShowSlow, so you can set up. It's probably the fastest and easiest way to start automating the performance data gathering. And then you can use more tools after that once you show what it is, um, the right data to collect. So come to showslow.org. Uh, look at the code on .com site. You can see the demo instance, and uh, we are open source project. So uh, send your questions, uh, forecast on GitHub, um, send us your patches, and uh, let's improve it and uh, measure our performance. Thank you.